Good evening from Sacred Space at Titania's Realm. It's 6.24pm on the 22nd of January 2024. Uh, it's been a scathing hot day and now we're about to have a, um, a, a early evening storm. Skies, all sorts of strange colours really. But I feel inspired, probably innovated by the storm, storm, by the storm, as I do get innovated by storms, people. Um, I'm watching an interesting movie called Freaks about a little girl with um, some kind of telekinetic powers, and uh, which is quite interesting. But uh, I was scrolling through my vocal media and decided to. Um, do an early recording, a day early of um, memories of the 23rd of January, 2023. The reason being, I just feel energized and innovated and motivated and um, I'm off to get my hair done tomorrow. So I won't have time to do my, well, I maybe might have made time, but I just uh, worry I won't have time to do my usual daily uh, vlogging of my journal entries and uh, while I'm in the mood <laughs> innovated by the storm you can see the the trees buffeted around I thought I might as well just do do today uh, do tomorrow's video today a day early and um, yeah and then if anything really astonishing happens tomorrow I'll just make a separate video but Usually I incorporate it into the day, but nothing astonishing has happened today of um, the 22nd except for a storm blowing in and I went out in the heat and filled up the little um, swimming pool for the birds that they enjoy swimming in, so I've, that's about the only thing I've done today. Cooked dinner, had an early, very early dinner. And yeah, I just, I feel fatigued and I woke up with a headache, which I went through the side effects of the um, bet mega and headache and fatigue are some of the, 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 the less worrisome side effects and backache as well. But I already had backache from the sciatica, which started a week ago, so that won't be um, a contributing factor. So I'm just cruising through my day adjusting to my new my new normal right my new normal which is abnormal but what can I say um, I'm soldiering on regardless in my own little sacred space garden at Titania's realm so let us begin um, it is uh, memories from the 23rd of January 2023 which uh, is tomorrow the scent of musk, horror memories of my father, struggling to keep Tabitha Hen alive and other post-traumatic growth veinettes from my life, smiley face. Um, I flash back to, I remembered a dream I had just upon awaking this morning, which was quite intense. It was like being in a big bus terminus or some kind of terminal maybe at an airport or something and um, I went into one entrance and outside was bright sunny light right and I walked into the entrance of this terminal and I saw you know quite a lot of people mingling there and I saw uh, my ex-lover Dave quite distinctly his face and his long dreadlocks just staring right back at me surrounded by about three or four women and um, as soon as I saw him in the dream I just sort of looked and then stepped back out into the bright light outside of the terminal basically to avoid him which I don't normally do that I don't avoid anyone fuck them they they, they um when if they're my enemy and they went out of their way to destroy me they have to just fucking face me, right? Mostly it's them who slink away because deep down they feel guilty, right? But in the dream, I actually act actively avoided him and dived back outside of this big, like almost an aircraft hangar. It was a weird building, very, very long, painted in charcoal 
dark charcoal grey. So I stepped back outside and I was thinking to myself in the dream, fuck, 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 why is he there? Why is he standing there looking at me, you know? So I walked to the other end of the, the building, quite a long walk up the other end and went into another entrance further down, entered the building and... Um, yeah, I can't remember if um, he approached me or if I ran into him again, but it was um, it was odd, odd sensation. And then I woke up. So I thought, mm, it's probably a warning from spirit to, to warn me that he's around or I'm going to run into him somewhere again, as I, you know, do on average every four to six months. So, and it means nothing. I don't engage with him. I just... Last time I, I did engage a little bit because I um, cranked up the music and gave, gave him the finger, but usually I just ignore him, you know. I can't be bothered with idiots. But it was odd that I dreamt of him. So anyway, um, that, was, that was this morning's dream, which I didn't add in to this morning's um, memories for some reason. I guess I had to process it a bit more. Sometimes I wonder why I keep having the spiritual connection or psychic connection to that man because he was just awful, you know, in the broad scheme of things. There were a few nice things he did, like one time he lent me a cord for my computer, uh, another time he um, lent me $20 for, um, no, he gave me the cord for the computer, um, but another time he lent me $20 to help me out with cat biscuits. But then, you know, I'd see him again at the casino and he'd be all condescending and awful, treat me like I'm some kind of fucking victim or a leper, which I did not appreciate, by the way. And um, even his cousin looked angry and upset when he lent me the $20. Like, $20. Like, this is a man that drives around in a brand new Jeep the size of a house, but he begrudged lending me $20 fucking dollars. I mean, fuck off. Serious, and you know, then I ended up still strung out over him for years. Oh, uh, you know, I guess it's just an old tape from my awful abuse of childhood because my uncle Case, who actually shares the same birthday as him, was also incredibly tight with money and was incredibly vile and abusive to me. And it's maybe he's just maybe he's just another fragment of that fucking kaleidoscope from hell that drew in that energy, you know. I had a trance drumming, I did a trance drumming recently, about a week ago, um, because <laughs> I was occasionally getting the spirit of my dead lover from 20, 24 years ago, David Davidson, come through, and invariably I tell him to fuck off too, because he was just so fucking evil. And, uh, yeah, last week when I did the uh, trance drumming, the spirit said... Um, Ty the ty tyrannical trickster is now gone. I thought they meant a human living person. I said, who are you talking about? And they said, Davidson. And of course, somehow, somehow, that entity had drawn in this other guy last year who was also a game player or a weirdo or I don't know what the fuck his deal was. But anyway... He um he was trying to seduce me into something and then bailed on me when I got when when he got COVID. So what the actual fuck? But I was freaked out from the beginning and told him so because his surname was Davidson. And I thought, what's the odds of attracting another wannabe lover with the same surname as your dead evil ex who haunted you when he died, you know? Like it's just too fucking freaky for words. So anyway, um, so the spirits told me, you know, at the last trance drumming that um, the trickster spirit has gone and can't interfere in my love life anymore. Well, we'll see about that because at the moment I don't have a love life because, um, yeah, not none of them are really, none of them, none of them are really serious. They're just playing me for some sort of, I don't know what, just, um, just for their own entertainment I guess and you know the ones that I'm fond of you know one in particular that I'm quite fond of is married so nothing will happen with that and I don't think he's playing me along malevolently either it's just um he's married
zip, 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 Donata. Nothing goes further than that. So anyway, so I got, anyway, I got to thinking about it and I thought, I'm going to do another video. And then I started reading through um, tomorrow's um, journal entries that are up on Vocal Media if you want to read them at your own pace or in your own time or if you want to read other of my weird life histories. They, they are fucking weird at times. They even weird me out, darlings, but I had to live through it because that was my reality. So, um, yeah, so I sort of glanced through it and thought, oh, this is juicy and I don't want to wait till tomorrow to do it. I'll do it today while I feel motivated and then tomorrow I can rest because after having my hair done um, and still adjusting to the new, the new medication, I'm going to probably need a bit more of a rest. <laughs> so anyway, that's my story so far. Um, I posted... And I really love this picture. I, 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 it just it speaks to me. It's my ancient Viking Celtic ancestry comes into play from time to time. Even though I'm a New Zealander and I wasn't raised with any direct Irish or Scottish influences, it's in the blood. It's in it's in it's in the DNA. It's in the genes, right? So here we have um, everything is in service. We are all connected to everything else. Which is probably why I still dream of um, that former lover, the still living one, um, with the dreadlocks that was such a fucking nitwit. Because whether we like it or not, we've, um, we've created a psychic bond somehow. And uh, I still dream of him occasionally fortunately that's rare that I dream of him and I still run into him in random weird situations like crossroads on the road or red lights or one time coming out of the car park in the supermarket at Woolies so it's a bit odd and um, it is what it is and uh, he has no real connection to me anymore apart from mem uh, memories both pleasant and un majority of them now unpleasant because I choose to cleave to my truth no matter what darlings that's the way I am I have to ride that razor blade of agony at times and uh, one day when I'm dead it'll all be let go of hopefully but in the meantime I hold to my 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 integrity and my honesty and my authenticity and truth truth 23rd of January 2023 I showed you in my video earlier today the process of me making it and here it is completed that little Labrador it's not little actually it's quite big that uh, Labradorite pendant that I worked on last year. So um, I need to buy more silver sheet and start making more pendants, but I'm not motivated because nothing's sold and I'm just like, blah, just can't be bothered. And uh, the sheet I bought to make those um, shop press medallions was actually very expensive, so... Um, I'm stymied by poverty people and also I'm finding that extremely depressing and grinding my gears too. But it is what it is. Every now and then I push through it and go into a little bit of debt by putting things on after pay and I buy my silver and bits and pieces that way and then I wait till I pay it off before I buy more and I, I nudge myself along that way. And it's it's just so hard, you know? It's just so fucking hard um, by the way I don't get paid for my writings on vocal, vocal media because no one reads it so it's like a popular, popularity thing like um, you only get paid if people read your stuff and I won't promote and force my stuff on anyone especially since the majority of it's quite intense trauma processing 
so I don't get paid, but I pay for the privilege of having my writings up there. So it actually costs me money and um, I don't get paid. I don't get paid by YouTube who every now and then threatens to um, demonetize me or take my channel down when they don't like something I say. But I've never been paid from them by them. So I just laugh my ass off when they do that because it's ridiculous and infantile. And um, I don't get paid for my jewelry because it isn't selling. And um, I don't get paid in any other real way, except I do get, you know, let's be fair here, I do get my disability pension. So I do get to keep my head just barely above water. And that's it. So sometimes I struggle with feeling like I'm really financially a loser, but it's not my fault if people won't pay me or don't pay me and um, don't buy my stuff, right? And uh, what can you do? What can you do? I think that's that's something I'm struggling with at the moment because I'm under the influence of a new medication and so I, I spin on a dime about all the things that aren't working in my life instead of focusing on the fact that I am healing, I am healing, I am healing. And when my bladder is healed, which it's not a cure, it's just a long-term treatment till the day I die. But if my bladder behaves itself, I'll have more time and energy to produce more, more things that I don't fucking get paid for. So it feels like a hell loop, people. Probably is a hell loop too. I mentioned that to my urologist and she found that extremely... She just thought it was, she just thought I was bitter and ungracious, I suppose, but she looked quite shocked. But I know a fucking hell loop when I see one. I've been in one for decades. I know, you know, my inability to find a truly loving partner who's available to me and chooses me, that's the worst fucking hellscape of all because it means I have to stay on my own, feeling more and more vulnerable, more and more fragile. And, um, you know, starting to get fucking bitter in my old age too. Which I, didn't want, I didn't want to grow up to be like my neighbour, Mrs Euphemia Walker, who hated little children and was all wild and Scottish and witchy and in her late 80s, die alone in misery. I don't want to end up like that. But I guess it is what it is, you know. My kids are estranged to me now and I'm going to die alone and in misery. We could look on the bright side of life though. It's not so bad dying alone and in misery than being with some fucking bastard that tries to kill you or destroys you in every other way like the other lovers did to me. So head up, chin up, chest out, shoulders back. Look into the horizon, Tanya. The blue-green horizon of a hail, hailstorm waiting to happen. Over there, it's all brownish, khaki, weird colour. I'll show you. Can you see it between the trees? Weird colour. Over there, it's slight greenish tinge to it. But you know what? It'll be a release to have the rain after a... The epic heat today so again it's going to be an epic storm but it's not so bad if you're safely indoors that is so always look on the bright side of life babies here's the back of that pendant that i'd um finished setting and uh, look i can see all the gaps and it's not perfect but you know for fuck's sake, it was sterling silver bezel wire that wasn't soft and I wasn't able to bend it and force it over and I was a rank beginner. So it's pretty good given my level of skills at that time. But I know now I can do better and I will do better and I will continuously improve because I am determined and I am powerful and I'm in love with the multiverses. And they're making me make this crazy video for you right now. 
for whatever reason, someone needs to hear it. We, the people, can improve on ourselves day by day, moment by moment, and do better. So, and we will, in time. We will each as individuals and as a collective achieve great things. I just spoke, this is still 2023, so a year ago. I just spoke to Shine Lawyers. Actually, was it a year ago or was it two years ago? Let me just scroll back. You got to just, yeah, it was a year ago. Don't mind me, my mind, my mind's a bit um, scattered at the moment, probably from the heat. I just spoke to Shine Lawyers. Apparently it's legal for hospitals to destroy patient records after seven years. Exclamation mark. I've never heard anything more outrageous in all my life. Um, you know, when I when I was in charge of archiving, you kept the records of people for the entire span of their lifetime. So I so I believed. But anyway, now you get tossed out after seven years, eliminated as if you didn't exist. It's just outrageous. But she informed me that they were able to get a record of my surgery with the TVT tape in 2007. I am one of the lucky ones, as many women had no records left with evidence of their surgery, so were unable to claim compensation. What the actual fuck? And um, I've since had a, received a phone call from Shine Lawyers are no longer in charge of that case. It's been taken out of their hands because they were, well, they were doing the wrong thing too. So um, it's now handled by someone else. I can't remember who, but they did contact me and said there's a settlement coming sometime this year, but they can't do the initial payout until they've got all the records for all the women that are still chasing the paper trail. So there's a delay. Oh, you think? So any excuse to fucking delay paying us out, right? But to be fair, I would like to see all those women whose records were thrown out get a fair chance of getting some compensation since it's not their fault they were screwed over by their own medical system and our government it's the cover-up is just beyond evil but they did the same thing with the hardy group years ago with the with the mesothelioma and the asbestosis and just waited till the men were so far gone that they died to try and avoid paying out too it's just perverted and evil is what it is there's no other word to describe it Anyway, I continue writing. This tells me that this practice of deleting patient files is quite deliberate. It should not be legal or even ethical to dispose of medical records while a patient is still living. The woman I spoke to said she had three pages of evidence from my file that I had had that surgery and the product number the TVT tape of the TVT tape installed into my bladder but she is sending me that information for my own private records so I have proof which I'm very grateful she did that thank you for that bit of humanity and decency at the very least shine lawyers meanwhile all my other QE2 rec records are missing or disposed of. This includes years and years of dentistry at that hospital, six or seven colonoscopies at that hospital, all just disappeared. It's outrageous. She advised me to speak to the medical record staff at the hospital. It's potentially it's just been archived somewhere. Hmm, interesting. I flicked them an e email and never got a reply. I just basically wrote, where the fuck are my records? So, of course, they thought I was being rude. No, I want to know, where the fuck is my patient file? But, you know, we know where it is, don't we? 
cremated somewhere with all the other women who dared stand up and fight for themselves. Here I continue to write, I feel very angry and upset for all the other women who could not fight against the machine of malfeasance that is Queensland health bureaucracy because their files were destroyed, yet they are sitting with a ticking time bomb in their bodies and are not taken seriously enough or respected enough as patients or as human beings to have their records preserved so there is no way of gaining proper urology treatment. And again, I have only recently received urology treatment because my wonderful psychiatrist paid out of his own pocket for me to see a private urologist. And also, Medicare has withheld the rebate from the first visit to him. So I'm now having trouble I'm going to have to chase them up. So my doctor who paid, and it will be quite obvious who paid for that treatment, by the way, hasn't received the rebate that is due back to him because he paid for my treatment. Therefore, he's entitled to the rebate, not me. And they never sent me the rebate for the first one either, which is odd. So the second rebate from the last visit, they did finally put into my bank account and I immediately transferred it back to his. But how they can bureaucratically fuck up a simple thing like a rebate to the person who paid for the treatment, it should automatically go back to their account. I mean, it's common sense. It's not rocket science, people. But, you know... They're playing games with that, with money, trying to make me look like I'm trying to dodge the system or do something wrong when all I'm doing is trying to get proper treatment for my bladder and I'm in a unique position that I have a psychiatrist fighting for me so I could have that treatment. So Medicare, if you're watching this video, pay my doctor back the rebate that is owed him think it's about $86. Do the right thing for the love of all the gods. Anyway, that's me having my little temper tantrum, but it's righteous anger because someone's gone out of their way and put in their hand in their own personal pocket to protect me and make sure I get treatment, even though I'm not happy about this medication, but it is what it is. And they can't return him the bloody rebate they owe him. It's disgraceful. Here I continue. There is another word for this. Genocide. Um, in response to eliminating our files is eliminating our personhood and our existence on the planet via the bureaucratic process. Even the fucking Nazis kept pretty accurate lists of all the people they exterminated. We are being culled systematically via medical malfeasance. Yes, we are. And it'll be <laughs> bigger than Ben Hurt. Not just little on me with my little flagging bladder from the TVT tape, by the way. I hate to think what else is going on in our medical system. Well, we know, don't we? The last four years speaks to that. Here I write, I mean, for fuck's sake, even the Nazis in World War II kept proper records. I still have the lists where Case van der Kreft contributed names of fallen compatriots in that hellish concentration camp, which I will remind you, was Mittel Baldora in Nordhausen, where they built the V1 and V2 rockets on assembly lines, right? That were then used to blitz London with. He was a, a political slave labourer prisoner, literally dragged out of his bed one night on his mother's birthday, which ironically happened to coincide as his death date, 25th of November. And he was taken to that camp to build those rockets. And he was in that tunnel 
for 18 months, by the way, which is a very long time to be surviving in that level of concentration camp that was so awful. And he actually admitted to me, no, he didn't admit it to me himself. A, a fellow compatriot that had been in the same camp admitted it to me, said to me, tell me, do you think that I'm an attractive man even though I'm old now? His name was Leo Fontaine. I've never fucking forgotten him. He dropped a little truth bomb and a hint to me as to how they survived so long in that camp. I was utterly, utterly horrified. So I looked at him, I said, well, yes, you are a very attractive man, Leo, for your age. I mean, you know, I can see you would have been very beautiful when you were a young man, very handsome indeed. He looked at me. Do you think that Case was handsome? I said, Case was indeed handsome as a young man. You were both extraordinarily handsome men. He said, have you not realised then that um, don't you find it a bit odd that uh, the only ones to have survived that long languishing in that camp were the pretty ones? I just looked at him, I said, please say no more. I've received your message loud and clear. Don't, we won't discuss this any further. He looked at me and nodded. He chose Case's funeral to bring that up to me, by the way, which was... like rubbing your face in fucking dirt and shit and piss. The timing was a bit fucking sadistic. But here's the reality. Those two men survived because of their level of attractiveness and also a little bit of luck, a little bit of frickin' stoicism and determination that Leo admitted that's what was going on in that camp. Only a few names were missing as the Nazis kept such excellent records. And uh, yes, Case, towards the end of his life, as he was dying of bone cancer from, um, he, he had prostate cancer and it went into his bones. He, um, he was going back to Middle Baldora on a yearly basis and the memories flooding back was remembering names of compatriots who were not on the lists. So he was providing the names to the German government. So after, you know, at that time, it was something like um, 60 years or so since the war had ended, finally... Um, the family of these dead men finally got peace and acknowledgement that their sons, husbands, brothers, what have you, had indeed died in that camp. So that was one lovely thing that Case did before he died, um, was able to give closure to those families via adding those names to the list. So I'm sure they're very grateful to him for that. You know, imagine waiting 60 years to find out what happened to your kids or your husband or son, though. It's just horrendous. I still have the... Oh, do I still have them or did I burn them? I think I kept the lists. I burnt a lot of stuff but relating to Case and my mother. Just didn't want to keep that energy around. But I still have his rock from Middle Baldora that he came back with a souvenir from the camp with in the last few years of his life and the book about what it was like to be in the tunnels and about Middle Baldora. I still have that. Anyway, um, here I continue. Our government, and in plural S, governments the world over, I'm sure this is going on, can't even preserve medical records for living patients in peacetime. It's horrific and astonishing. So there you have it. <clears throat> I can almost not breathe. I'm just 
it's, it just up enrages and upsets me so very much how badly I have been systemically abused by my own government. It's just heinous. The same government that puts a roof over my head and gives me a little pension, mind you, but, you know, invalidates my existence by throwing out my patient file. It's just vicious beyond belief. 23rd of January 2021. I write here as a comment. Miss my smelly but wonderful earth angel. And um, in 2020, of, eve, of tomorrow's even date, uh, so 23rd of January, I wrote, I just finished telling her she smells like stale cat litter. So she is washing her face. Good girl. And there we have, oh, come on. Here's a photo of my good girl, my beautiful girl, cleaning her face after I told her she's stinky and smells like cat litter. <laughs> I swear to God, the older they got, they got both the cats and the dog. <coughs> they seem to understand English very well understand my tone and inflection right but they were really communicating with me so well it's like they were human and then they died so there is that my beautiful babies so still in 2021 although that photo was from 2020 I keep smelling musk lollies, the strong, sweet smell. Just going to put a light on, it's getting very dark now. Uh, there we are. Last night, one of the women dancing near me smelt of it, which was unusual as I have been smelling it for the past few days. I met her in the ladies' toilets later and observed that she did not reek of sweet musk anymore. Perhaps her fragrance had dissipated, as frankly, they don't make long-lasting perfumes anymore. I have a rather wistful memory from childhood, after school, walking along Newtown, no doubt on my way to my mother's second-hand shop there. On the way, there was a factory that made musk lollies and the pungent smell would fill the air and somehow it always made me feel incredibly lonely and sad, sauntering slowly, feeling exhausted and drained by Wellington Girls College and all the epic evil bullying that occurred there. Fuck, I hated school and my home life too. I must have been 13 years old. So walking past this factory with its sweet smell was both a comfort and a warning to me. I could not see inside it as they boarded all the front windows, which was kind of weird. And there was always this frisson of fear that went through me. I knew not to try to go near that factory, which was also weird as I adore lollies, candy of all kinds. So I'm trying to figure out why Musk is being alerted to my senses. Hmm. The truth, as always, will be revealed. I need only wait for true hearts and minds to reveal themselves. They always do in the right time and space and I always get the end of the story often in miraculous or even supernatural ways as my angels operate that way but musk oh well it could be a worse smell Three twenty-two a.m. 
home from a great night of dancing at the Live Wire Bar Treasury Casino. I went off, which is surprising as the DJ played techno and or house shit early in the night, which I find so boring and irritating that I almost went home early. Then they had two DJs who were actually quite good and the bass was thrumming so hard I felt it right in the middle of my chest like a fucking heart attack. But I went with it and had a great time. Then the earlier DJ came back on and this time he played better tunes. So I hated him less than I did early on, lol. My Korean friend Joe came to dance with me. He was a bit sweet on me, was Joe. Never asked me out though. This is the thing. I had quite a few men in, in that live wire bar scene that were madly in love with me, were obsessive or, you know, eager to, to hang around me and dance with me. Not one of them asked me out. It was just bizarre. It was like I was just this icon or, um, I don't know how you describe it. Like I was just something, something or someone for them to fawn over when I was there on the weekend. And they forgot that I'm a real person the rest of the week too, right? It's odd. But anyway, it doesn't matter now, but I just find that a bit odd. He bought me a drink and just reveled in my company and was quite affectionate in his pl platonic way, which is refreshing after the epically fucking awful ways I have been treated by men at the casino and that pub for nine years. Another guy, Carl, who I know from Irish Murphy's, came up to dance with me and another woman briefly. I carried on dancing with the woman until the DJ finished at two. So he was on reasonably good terms with me back in 2021, but when I ran into him at um, the Brooklyn Standard, I, he'd, he'd come a few months prior at the cassette. He was flagrantly hostile. I still have no idea what that was about because we used to sometimes be reasonably, you know, lukewarm to each other. But anyway, it's as they say in English in England, there's not queerer than folk. So I just uh, brush it off and don't worry about it. I can't. I don't have the energy to invest in idiots. I really don't. But anyway. As I say, I carried on dancing with the woman until the DJ finished it too. Don't remember who she was now, but would have been just some random person that was enjoying dancing with me. Then I went to the 7-Eleven to buy a ginger beer and sang with the busker briefly, Hotel California. I threw him a few coins, then headed home. I realised that would have been Frank. If I, if I threw him coins, it would have been frank because, um, you know, I didn't usually give money to my friend George because I used to give him lifts home and do other, you know, nice things for him like that. So, um, yeah, I did occasionally throw George a few coins, but very rarely. He always say, no, no, don't do that, you know, because we were friends. But anyway, I realised just as I got near home, that I was ravenous, so I drove down to Macca's for some hot cakes and hash browns. I shared the hot cakes with Socks, who was beside himself with joy. Now ready for a quick shower and to bed. I love my wild carefree nights. Happy Mama T now. Happy, but utterly exhausted. Oh, and some good looking nout of a young man tried to get me to go home with him. Ah, uh, no. Could have been my son, and he pissed me off during the evening by trying to wear my top hat. Also, I have lost any urge to sleep with any man. 
which is a good thing, I think, not wasting my heart and Pornani on useless using dickheads is very empowering. Although my libido did have a slight little sing, so it's still alive, way down in my soul somewhere. My mind just can't recalibrate any further abuses. So there is that. Still and all, I had a happy time and at one point even made the security guards laugh as I was hamming up so much. It was a tad hilarious. 23rd of January 2020. I woke up with a bad back and a stiff neck too. Rain. So good. In spite of the heat, I woke up alive and aware and grateful and happy. It's another beautiful day. Then I posted a quote by A.R. Lucas. We've been infected with this idea that love is an emotion only felt between two people. But love is universal, an energy, a contagious force, a gift. To offer money to a homeless man is to love. To save a worm from the sun is to love. To smile at a stranger is love. To be grateful, to be hopeful, to be brave, to be forgiving, to be proud, is to love. I continue on. Quite unwell today. Asthma. Blech. I felt good around 1pm, so used that burst of serenity to cook a chicken tagine. I ate dinner early at 3pm. The garlic and ginger drove icky phlegm out of my chest. No wonder I've been feeling weak the past few days, brewing a chest infection. Yuck. I may have to go get some antibiotics if I get worse. That will involve having to see my GP. Grr. Hopefully it was just a mild inflammation and the chest settles back down. It often does if I rest, drink enough fluids and pay no attention to it, which I realised today a script I got for Ventolin and Ceratide a year ago is now out of date. It expired on the 19th. So I have to trot down to the GP and get another script for my asthma medication, which I haven't really had to rely on too much in the last few weeks, which has been great. Finally, my asthma seems to have settled down a bit. But um, yeah, I panicked when I realised I don't have a script and I'm running low on my Ventolin. So I have to organise that soon, just in case... Um, my asthma gets bad again, which it can on a whim, very randomly and unpredictably play up. Um, I usually get thunder asthma too, but um, yeah, I don't think we're going to get that storm now. The sky's still a strange colour, but there's no more thunder and it sort of looks like it's blown past us. Here I say, 2020, Thor and Odin are playing lawn bowls again. It's damp and humid, but a storm is coming. Phew. That's weird. Yesterday, my mouse was doing weird things. Yesterday, while walking around my garden, I heard the words quite distinctly inside my mind, the whore of Babylon. So I was a tad disturbed, but half jokingly said, you mean the whore of Brisbane, which one? 
She who stinks up the CBD in the summer heat with her unclean estrus. She is no whore. She gives it away for free. Then I started laughing. Me, the old crone celibate, roiling in my own judgment, as, as after all, I used to be out in the night with that filthy, stinking, treacherous one. I put up even with her stinking loins. Thought she was a true friend. I was silly as a wheel, rolling to my own suicide, which only the gods put the brakes on at the usual 11th hour. I know, they like to toy with me, then send me out into the fray, the disarray, the decay, the nightlife of Brisbane, where even the rats are bigger than fox terriers. Mind you, I haven't seen them in recent years. Looks like the health department took action on that bubonic plague waiting to fester. But alas, the humanoids are worse. Some of them come dancing without washing their pits or loins, then want to cosy up to me. Putrid. So I am, and bear in mind, I have a very sensitive sense of smell. So um, I read recently, I read some years ago that people with Asperger's have got a very fine sense of smell too. And I don't, I'm not on the spectrum, but um, my, my friend who had Asperger's, who I used to dance with regularly, Karen, she could smell people from across the room and she'd turn to me and she'd, she'd start gagging. I'd go, what's wrong? Can't you smell it? Can't you smell it? And anyway, when they'd get, the offending personage would get a bit closer to me. I'd smell it too. I'd go, my God, Karen, you're right. She said her eyes would be streaming from the stench of it. And she'd be like, why, why didn't you smell it until now? I said, look, I've got a good sense of smell, but yours is so finely tuned. I said, you smelt them from the other end of the, the room, you know. But when they got up close, I'd be like, as well. It was, oh, it was putrid. It was absolutely putrid. How can you even go out like that, stinking like that? It's utterly shameless. But they, they obviously can't smell themselves. It's, it's just beyond awful. Really beyond awful. So anyway, I don't have to deal with that at the casino anymore. Thank, thank the gods. So I am on hiatus from the heinous, taking a break, rethinking my future. If there is one, as the apocalypse is in full swing, bushfires, floods, a new SARS incoming, drought and people who don't wash, laughing my ass off. So I push the thought of the Whore of Babylon aside, but not long after, got embroiled in a fight with a Polish Nazi Holocaust revisionist. So I had my usual 10 cents worth, but it was such a waste of time, energy and words fighting on Facebook with online Nazis. They are like giant whores of Babylon. You really just need to just cut off their heads. Whoops, been watching too much Van Helsing. But vampires are real. I was raised by them. They sucked me of my life's blood and left me to die. But I grew back again, arose and shone. Perhaps I always will be shining. It used to be silk, but now it's fucking polyester. But we make do and I am rewarded with the things I most desperately need and loved accordingly to those of you who um, act as my patrons and help me out whenever you can much gratitude to you my darlings so anyway Lynn rings me later in the evening tells me to google revelations um, 17 the prophecy which she believes relates to the downfall of the Roman Catholic Church. 
I read it aloud. I tell her, I am a Jew and I don't believe in the New Testament or any other doom and gloom apocalyptic prophecies. But Nostradamus also wrote about the end of the church and a new world. Well, with all the filthy child sacrificing, child raping debauchery that even Prince Andrew is associated with, that time is upon us. For the divine feminine to rise up and recreate a safe planet for her children. To purge and cleanse the filth that violates the laws of nature. But I know if and when she does, humanity will perish along with everything else. The bushfires killed a billion innocent life forms, a few humans with it. We are like ants swarming all over the earth and our mother wants to delouse herself. So I tell Lynn that I must have picked up on her vibes or thought forms as I had heard the words whore of Babylon at the same time she was reading revelations. So we are very much connected telepathically and I am relieved it was not a message that I would have, would have another encounter with the actual whores of Brisbane. We both had to laugh. There are so many of them and they pop up like shadow puppets in a macabre play with monotonous regularity. Find me anywhere, smirk smugly with their henchwomen. I just roll my eyes and shake them off and keep walking and or dancing free. For I grew up with the most debased and depraved of humanity and I recognise that stink anywhere. I carry a little bell with me now. Would you like to see it? I'll grab it, hang on a sec. My keys are on, on the coffee table because Charlie was playing with it this morning. Here she is, my little bell. <laughs> Wherever I go, I have that little bell with me. I often have the resist have to resist the urge to ring it in their faces and scream, unclean, unclean, bring out your dead. But those zombies don't comprehend my tumescent humour or my reborn angels' feathery, flighty fight. And the real reason I have the little bell which Charlie was playing with, the Savo, is um, fairies, the fairy realms, like the sound of bells. And so it's lucky, brings me a bit of luck and protection. So that's the real reason, but hey, you know, you just had the Grimm's fairy tale reason for it. Bring out your dead babies. Some of them don't even know that they're dead inside. They're just, it's, it's just tragic, really, interacting with some people out in the world. They're just completely soulless and dead inside. So I just smile and nod politely and carry on, walk past and try to, you know, keep to myself as much as possible. Don't want to deal with zombies, darlings. They've got nothing to offer the world. I know, I used to be one. I was very, very ill for a very, very long time. Even my enemy, my dead ex-lover, David Davidson, one time said to me, you've got so much to offer the world, Tanya. You can do anything. And I guess that little bit of a pep talk must have finally sunk into my brain somewhere along the way. That's the one nice thing he did for me. 
because in more dangerous, turgid, awful times, I would hear him say that you have a lot to offer the world and you can do anything. Almost like a fucking mantra to bring me back to life again and inspire me to keep going when I'd had yet another kick in the face by some malevolent low dog man or, you know, the bullshit with the hospitals that went on and any other kind of abuse. I'd have to be reminded you have a lot to offer the world and you can do anything. So I have to offer that kiss up to that dead fucking malevolent arsehole because, yes... Those were two sentences he gifted me that were kind, but they did not compensate for all the other rot he did to me. So, yin and yang people, swirling in infinity, swirling the darkness and the light, trying to come up in the zero point field in perfect harmonic resonance, resonance, resonance and balance out of the shit let beautiful things grow and here she is babies still hoping against hope for my true love partner to manifest in my life and say you're the one tanya i want you we're gonna make it together not just for one night only but for a loving long partnership well that's a dream a long held dream while men like davidson chose other women over me and scorned and mocked and derided me in front of his friends, by the way. For that, he's still writhing in a small corner of hell because, yes, the Tanya can do anything and it does not behoove one to unleash her curses because they, they're long-lasting too. Longer-lasting than the brief fucking frotterings I had with them. That's for sure. So, anyway, but let go, let God, right? Let, let, let God deal with them now, since he created those souls, gave them free will, and sat back and watched them wreak unholy fucking awfulness, and not just my life, but the lives of many, many other women. So he'll be paying for that karma now. Or so I hope and pray. Otherwise, what kind of God is there if there's no justice ever, not even in the afterlife? And I don't believe in hell per se, really. But I hope he's doing some major re-educating on how to be a real man the next time he gets incarnated back to earth. The cunt. I mean, you almost have to laugh, don't you? You almost have to laugh. Anyway, I'll repeat that last sentence. But those zombies don't comprehend my tumescent humour or my reborn angel's feathery, flighty fight. How can they when even I don't quite know? whom I am becoming. Aye, Ashe, Aye, I am that I am, or I am whom I am becoming. God's name. Well, who am I becoming? Mostly old and frail and unloved. Well, I'm not unloved. I'm loved greatly and deeply by my platonic friends, but unloved by a life partner, you know, no one's decent or honouring or noble enough to take me on. It's just, it's just the way it is. But the angels know, my true friends know, and love me bravely and fiercely, for they have seen me heal in microcosmic ways. This earth is beautiful. I am beautiful. We are going to heal and become beautiful, safe and free. 
I pray to the gods to be merciful on us. We, the humans, that showed little or no mercy to each other or to our own home, Gaia. I know there is zero point energy out there. Didn't I just mention that just a few paragraphs ago? The balance point between yin and yang. Wow. It's almost like... Oh, well, I'm psychic. I know there is zero point energy out there. A life of absolute abundance. A life of peace. Shalom. Salam. I can see it, taste it, the ambrosia of the gods. When will they gift it to us? When we show ourselves worthy, responsible, caring for all of life, honourable. It is coming. Life. Be in it. Flow with it. Love. That was written, by the way, in 2020, before the entire world went completely to the shitter. Me, always hoping against hope, right? Almost sensing the horrors before it even completely manifests at our doorsteps. Well, I've always been like a canary down the mine, an early warning system part of the backhanded gifts of cumulative trauma people 23rd of January 2019 schwitzing in the heat I need to get some cooler summer dresses or stand under a cold shower or whatever I was struggling with the heat and having anxiety attacks after debriefing a friend with similar struggles as myself I did not sleep much last night. So I did what I always do when life circumstances get overwhelming. I went back to bed and breathed calmly until I fell asleep for a few hours. Now I feel much better, although still very hot. Time to have a shower, wash off the sweat and embrace the afternoon. 23rd of January. 2017 quote of the day this is posted by Janice Ian who is a, a famous American folk singer quote of the day you are the result of 3.8 billion years of evolutionary success act like it I can't shake my headache, day three, but my ear has quit hurting and my teeth are much better. Just keep fighting on. 2017 was one of the worst years for my life with the teeth. Problems had gone on for three summers and I was done. I was really quite fucking done, quite frankly. Speaking of which witch... I was just out in the garden watering. I have just washed my hair and as it is deadly fine and prone to breakage, I was, as is my usual custom, air drying it. It was wild and woolly. I don't fucking care. I also had a dress my daughter made which pattern is covered in very large eyes. I am still unwell so had an expression of dull homicide on my visage. Been dealing with trolls, which can be deleterious to the expression. So some guy walks up the street with headphones in his ears, being led by a stocky, moribund, staffy dog. Pardon me. 
Beauregard did not even notice the dog. So the guy who I swear to the gods and the most high looks like a young Art Garfunkel with thick, tight, curly hair looks at me with a smirk on his face. I stare blankly back. Resting bitch face is a gift, people, and continue watering. I think to myself, he is probably smiling at the music or whatever he is listening to, but he keeps staring and smiling. I keep ignoring. Neighbourhood bo neighborhood boys go by with a stack of soccer balls in a large netting bag. They too give me rather a perturbed glance. I don't care. I keep doing my thing. Inside I go after laboriously putting the hose away. My hair is dry now. So I reach for the brush in the bathroom and glance at the mirror. Holy hell, woman. I look like a blonde version of witchy poo. I shrug. It's only hair and appearances can be deceiving. Art might have better hair, but I have a better tude. The season of the witch, the art of not giving a fuck. Yesterday, Jenny and Brendan came to visit. It was lovely to spend time with them. I had dressed and scrubbed my still painful teeth. I had not checked my mirror after. So finally Jenny says, Tanya, you have a long white streak down your t-shirt. Oh my God, I look down, nod sagely. Yeah, true. Oh well, at least you both know I cared enough to clean my teeth before you arrived. Lol. God, how do I do it? Twenty third of January two thousand and sixteen. I have had to unfriend people, some I like very much, but they don't interact or rather haven't in over 12 months. This will be on Facebook, people, you know. I, I only keep very few real friends on Facebook who interact with me regularly. The rest are just squatting like toads. I don't even bother to unfriend them anymore unless they're overtly nasty. I just let them sit and squat because it's meaningless in the broad scheme of things. But back in the day, it used to grind my gears, right? Now I couldn't care less. Others have allegiances to forces that are, self uh, that are destructive to my emotional well-being. I am done, over, done, done, over, sick and tired of bullshit. So you can see I used to really care, now I couldn't give a flying fuck. But I brushed my hair for you this afternoon. Hope you appreciate that. I made an effort. <laughs> ah, this morning's video it wasn't completely brushed, but it was like air drying. As I say, I let it air dry and it dried quite neatly and I was freshly washed. But um, this, this evening I actually brushed it for you. Unfuck with a bull. Yeah, right. I missed my medications and I was very sensitive tonight. I let fucktards upset me. I think I will just have a hot bath and wash away the roiling emotions. Men who ask me for sex but can't treat me like a human. Trolls on the internet. Also misogynistic assholes that I kowtow to because, well, the cock is supreme and people are genuinely afraid to stand up in the face of tradition while fiddlers fiddle on roofs and the cow jumps over the moon. But women are still being raped and strangled and their kids are still being raped and interfered with. But no one does or says a thing as the elite 
are men in black. Read between the lines there, darlings. Fuck this bullshit. It just makes me sorry I survived. For what end? Nothing changes. And excuse me, but the next almighty cunt who says I play the victim, I will find him and smash him in his face. There. Feel better now? No. Because psychopaths never change. They keep finding new victims and if you call them out, you, the woman, are demonised. So everyone look busy. Hide. But look me in the eye and tell me they are not abusers. Really? Front me? Yeah, right. Bullshit. All of it. Anyway, glad I went dancing and glad to spend time with my beautiful women friends and glad I didn't let the horror lay me out cold like it usually does. I still have fire in my belly and a pure soul and maybe the Jewish God hates my guts but Odin, Thor and Freya love me. Maybe there is no God at all, but I am God and insanity is a blessing. In joke from my friend Jared, who shares enough of my history to know why that is funny. And uh, the in joke was I once went to the markets many, many years ago with Jared and my daughter Crystal who at the time was about 10. So look, she's um, 38 now, so we're talking 28 years ago. And uh, we were sitting, it was at Brunswick Street train station, and we were sitting there, and we I had this weird creak that kept coming up, wanting to borrow my pen, and when I lent it to him, he'd straight the pen up and down, this really is like the severest kind of satchel way, and I'd just be looking at him in like horror, and then i snatch the pen off him and then he'd come back like half an hour can I borrow the pen again so I was getting really creeped out and Jared was like laughing because he had the little stool next to me and he was laughing his ass off at me trying to contain my rage over this creepy fuck knuckle man and then the next thing that happened was my daughter was lying my 10 year old daughter was lying under the because I had a a tablecloth covering the table so she couldn't be seen, right? She's lying underneath the table droning, I am God, insanity is a blessing, over and over again. And people were coming to the store and looking for where this, this I, mean, I have to laugh about it now. It actually wasn't funny though. They're looking for this discarnate child's voice droning, I am God, insanity is a blessing. And I'd be just like looking around, pretending I didn't know that it was my child. And can you hear that? Because <laughs> like, you got to work with it, baby. I mean, she, she grew up to be an actor. What do you expect? She was a drama queen even then. But it was freaky shit, you know. Some people actually complained and told us not to come back to the market. So it's not my fault my daughter thinks she's God and that insanity is a blessing. And in a way, insanity in our family was kind of a blessing because you had to be insane to cope with all the weirdness that went on and all the awfulness. Like you couldn't be you couldn't be completely sane to survive our family. Trust me on that one. You had to have a bloody dark, surrealist, quirky, mad sense of humour. Anyway, we still laugh about that to this day, my daughter droning under the market table. I am God. Insanity is a blessing. Well, now we're estranged and um, technically she is God and I'm God and you're God and we're all sparks of the divine, so we all have God within us. Some of us are a little bit more blessed and some of us are a little bit more insane, darlings. It just depends which part of the spectrum of yin and yang and the zero point field you want to land on on any given moment in the space-time continuum. 
just saying. But anyway, 23rd of January 2015. I was very depressed at that time. That was um, seven months before my suicide attempt. But I, I did spiral down into depression early 2015. A YouTube video, How Fox Lies, Lies, Fuel the War on Drugs, Russell Brand, The Trues. And um, I wrote, agree, drug abuse wrecks lives and the five people closest to the addict, so entire families. Hardline drug enforcement does not resolve the incredible devastation these addicts and their families, friends and associates suffer. Legalise everything and spend that money on assisting the addicts to a safer, saner existence. And uh, I was uh, at that time in my life. I did end the friendship with that family not long after that, actually. I think it was February 2015. But I had spent 15 years supporting the, the mother of um, a heroin and methadone addicted daughter and um, she was raising her granddaughter and I was a very strong support to that family. So I saw firsthand how the effects of heroin has on an entire family. So I actually knew a little bit of what I was commentating on there. Um, it's, it's horrific. It, it is a horrific addiction heroin addiction in particular, the opiate, the opiate addictions. But um, yeah, I eventually um, cut my ties to that entire family and um, after my suicide attempt in August, 22nd of August 2015, life gradually began to um, come back into balance and get better. When you're not surrounded by toxic vicious entities who are demonic ridden and or under the influence of drugs or substances life gets better you just have to delouse yourself sometimes sometimes being a kind person trying to be you know thinking i was being a true and loving friend cost me dear just like being in relationships with monsters cost me dear too and uh, anyway, the gods wouldn't let me die that night. And uh, as I say, vomited me back to earth. And here we are, 2024, same time of year. I'm not depressed, but I am feeling a bit woozy and weird from the, the new medication and the in incessant heat. So um, we're all probably feeling a bit depleted right now. But don't worry, babies will be rising and shining. I'm going out again on Thursday night. Uh, Friday is Australia Day, or as, uh, as it should be rightly named, Invasion Day. But I'll still do my wild dance the night before in celebration of my survival on this planet and indeed in this country, C-U-N-T-R-Y. And... Um, celebrate my freedom as I do every weekend as long as my legs are capable of holding me up and I'm not slammed with some other worse illness which occasionally I do have to um, avoid dancing if I have uh, worse illnesses just saying 3 44 p.m home from a lovely lunch at Alexandra Hills Hotel with the beautiful Lynn and Annette. Afterwards, we went to Kapalaba Produce so I could pick up laying mash and diatomaceous earth. I don't think it's the same type that I wanted to use for homemade natural makeup, but it will keep the flies from breeding in the chalk coops. It had a lovely soft texture when I emptied the sack into my storage buckets, softer than velvet. I could have smushed it through my hands 
for hours. It has poured with rain all day, so as soon as I got inside, off came the glad rags, and into my nighty went I, smiley face. I am going to rest and snooze and read until I figure out if this middle-aged old duck wants to jump puddles and dance the mad dance of the newly emancipated or just lie down for the night. 3.30 a.m. Time to schluff, that means sleep. Been watching the Israeli TV show Prisoners of War. SBS played three episodes in a row. 23rd of January 2014. I finally posted the application for a death certificate for my father. So I will find out if he is dead in Perth or perhaps where and when. It will be good to get closure. I guess I will feel sad. Not that he died and no one notified me, but that my progenitor and that whole chapter of my life has fallen away. I was told that he was very good to me as a baby and I loved to snuggle in the small of his back as he radiated so much heat. This was how they got me to sleep. I loved his smell, old spice and his own distinctive man smell. He was incapable of being there for me. Too violent, too angry. In the end, he betrayed me with Giesler and Buck. I wonder how much they paid him to lie about me, or was he just feeble-minded? It cost him the last shreds of love and respect from his only daughter and a long estrangement, which lasted until his death, by the way. I could make myself feel better by putting all the blame and shame on Buck Shera, but my father rallied to his cause quite willingly. Their blind envy and hatred of me still has had repercussions. Poverty, trauma, inability to find or form a secure love relationship, even now, almost four years after my mother's death. Well, it's almost 14 years now in March, 7th of March. Jesus. Not that he can help me with anything. I don't worship that God, just saying. It's just an expression of despair. I would like to win out against those evil bastards one day, but I am still stuck in barely surviving mode. I guess, given more time, more healing, good fortune, better health, I might thrive one day, for truly that would be the best posthumous revenge on those who spent decades trying to destroy me. People tell me that I am a man-hater. This is simply not true. I loved my father very much as a child. I hated his fury, his weakness, his inability to withstand my mother their constant screaming, his failure to truly protect me. But he was the first love of my life. When he left my life at almost eight, I was bereft, but I had witnessed firsthand him smashing the window in temper on the day we were about to board ship heading for Germany. A tantrum of all tantrums. I was tempted to slap him myself. My mother told me they were getting a divorce and I was relieved, fucking relieved. I understood the rightness of that. Then again, when dad left me at the airport when I was 13, after visiting me in New Zealand, 
and taking me on holiday to the Bay of Islands and Auckland. I had an odd sort of breakdown. The grief was palpable. I cried inconsolably. People stared. <sighs> Dad was helpless, told me to stop it, get over it, words to that effect. He got on the plane back to Australia. Then I had a holiday with him when I was 16. I had my university entrance, so they sent me to Dad so I could have some sort of relationship with him before I entered university. My mother, this time, created an ugly, screaming scene at the airport. I vowed never to speak to her again. The first time of many estrangements I was compelled to have with my mother. I made no contact with her for the entire month with Dad. And uh, we were staying in a, a caravan park in Ipswich and uh, it was near an, like a nature reserve that had um, like a miniature zoo. It was lovely. They had massive big aviary full of all kinds of beautiful Australian birds and they had koalas and I can't remember. I think they even had a few emus. And it was just lovely. And there was a big public swimming pool nearby. So we spent a lot of time at the pool. The heat was intense. This was in 1981, people. And um, the heat was intense. One day we were walking up the main street at Ipswich. And I said to Dad, geez, Dad, it's, it's really hot today. And he looked at me and went, yeah, love, let's go to the pub. I'll get a beer and you can have a lemonade. So we went to the pub and then they announced on the radio it was 45 degrees that day. I said, gee, Dad, 45 degrees? He said, yeah, it didn't actually feel that hot. So, yeah, but anyway, I actually enjoyed my month staying with him in Ipswich and that was part of the reason why when I decided to leave Wellington, New Zealand, basically to get away from my in-laws, who were awful, my sister and brother-in-law, um, sister-in-law and brother-in-law, um, I decided to uh, migrate to Brisbane. My, my mother and Case wanted to migrate to Melbourne. And I said, you go to Melbourne, I'm going to Brisbane. I said, Melbourne's too cold for me in winter and the four seasons in one day meant I was chronically sick with my lungs. So I'm I'm going to Brisbane. It's it'll be better there. Of course I didn't envisage that as I got older and the temperatures have gotten hotter that it would become another hellscape for me here now after thirty five years of living here, right? So um if I had the money and you know, wasn't reliant on the disability pension. Sometimes I wonder if I should migrate back to New Zealand where at least it's cooler. But um, yeah, I can't, I wouldn't be able to survive. I wouldn't, probably wouldn't get my pension and I'd be, I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't have such a nice home as I have, so I'd be royally fucked. So I'm just sitting here now, squatting like a toad biding time until I eventually die I guess don't really have anything else to look forward to you know except for my little fantasies of finding a truly loving partner one day but pff, that probably won't ever happen either so um anyway I continue I made no contact with her for the entire month with Dad for the first time in my life. I felt free of her. I stayed with Dad at a caravan park in Ipswich. It was hot as Hades, so I wore t-shirts and shorts or skirts that summer. Dad took me to the pub and a much older Aboriginal man offered to fuck me. I was horrified as yet unaware of my nascent sexuality and beauty, still barely a woman who feared sex and life. I told my father. He said, What do you expect dressed like that? 
What can I do? A cold river of ice chilled my spine on that hot 40 degree day. I never forgot it. He wasn't man enough to tell a much younger man that he was inappropriate and to piss off. More proof I had no value. That I had to look after myself in a man's world. That I was not ever safe with either of my parents, the pedophile godfather Trevor Singh, or my sister Angela, or with Case, my de facto stepfather. They rejoiced in my victimhood, they orchestrated it, and still to this day, my sister is not sorry for refusing to protect me as a small child. She saved me once at age three from one of da David's, well, Dad, my father's name was David, from one of Dad's rages and threw me headlong into my bedroom and locked the door. I thought I was flying and landed very hardly on my bum. I remember trying to understand how I got there. Magic. I had learned to tune out the screaming and still a baby, well a toddler really, had been blissfully unaware of the danger. That was the last time my sister ever attempted to save me and there were worse experiences to come. She knew and did nothing, wrapped up in her narcissism, husband, new baby, Stuart world where she was safe and to hell with her little sister. So excuse me if I seem to hate men. Men have injured me beyond belief. So yeah, I don't hate all men. I hate abusers. All abusers. Male or female. I have a good radar for arseholes based on a lifetime, almost 49 years, well, 59 years now, of bitter, sickening, abhorrent experiences. I have witnessed all my close friends try to recover from similar. If I have to stand up and fight an injustice against an abuser, I will. If I have to be a stronger man inside of my own self than any I have been bred by, married to, or fucked by, then I will. I will never stand by while another woman or child is in front of me, struggling with a creep, and say nothing, do nothing. I am a woman who knows and who sees. I love men in spite of the fact that men represent the most destructive creatures on earth and I am seeking a truly good one to be my partner in life. I just hope like hell he will love me with all my damage and that I will know he is safe and decent and kind too. I cannot sell myself out or settle for anything less than real, enduring, secure love. Or my life, or is my life just a huge delusion, an illusion of real love that perniciously evades me? <laughs> I guess it will all make sense in the end. Update, 23rd of January 2019. My father turned up dead on 3rd of March 2000 
and 17. Three days before his 89th birthday, by the way. Kidney sepsis at the homeless hostel. They failed to take him to hospital in a timely manner. He was, in effect, murdered by the state of Victoria. So much for his long-held desire to be a rolling stone that gathered no moss. Fucking mossy kidney stones got him instead. I don't miss him. Maybe sometimes I have fond memories of his wry sense of humour and his smell and occasional kindness. Too occasional, but that is all. Update. Twenty third of January, twenty twenty. So here I've I've fleshed it out with a bit more detail, but it'll sound a bit repetitive. So bear with me. The bad penny turned up dead on third of March, two thousand seventeen, from kidney sepsis in Shepparton, Victoria, actually murdered by negligence in the home he was residing in for the last three years of his life after being placed there as a homeless man. They had not even known some kind soul had taken him to the hospital where he died. Shitful. I did not go down for his funeral. I had no money and no real love for that man but got manipulated by his female lawyer who contacted me into accepting his ashes as I was his only living relative in Australia. So like a good girl, I did my duty by him. The man that never protected me and was outright creepy and malevolent the last time I saw him in 2000. He had a habit of making loud, sexual, grunting noises when I bent down to pick up washing out of the basket to hang on the line. Vile, my own father. No wonder he thought it totally acceptable to do nothing while I was being molested by Trevor and later Case as a child. Dirty, filthy, enabling coward. Anyway, none of those filthy bastards can hurt me anymore. They are all just scraps of bone and ash floating on King Island at Wellington Point, which ironically, King Island used to be called Phillips Island back in the 1800s. And my father's surname was, and my maiden name was Phillips. So he indeed went home to the ancestral namesake of not lands. It's kind of an irony in all of that. I went there recently with Lynn and for the first time felt nothing but peace. A sign that their ghosts have finally lost their grip on me. Perhaps now, after decades of grief and horror, I will begin to blossom and bloom, thrive and flourish. This is just one small example of me coming back to full vibrancy and beginning to thrive and flourish, at least in my creativity, if nothing else. And create a beautiful life after all that destruction and trauma. They call it post-traumatic growth. I have witnessed myself beginning to heal in recent weeks. My health, always precarious and unpredictable, is fragile. But my will to live, to become, to love and engage with life fully is as strong as ever, perhaps even stronger. I have been given a great gift. I might as well enjoy it. Spread joy, not oi. 
Thank you to the beautiful one who blessed me with a marvellous intervention this week. It will make a huge difference to my life. The heat has been intolerable. And thank you to that beautiful person for that, the gift of the air conditioner. I have truly loving earth angels in my life who uphold me and protect me and fight for me in big and small ways. I am blessed by the gods and a few remarkable humans. Scary epic drive with she who shall not be named to the Royal Children's Hospital to get her eyes checked. Flash flooding, road redirections, most of the journey at a crawl. I feel quite anxious, almost to the point of being sick. I might take a Valium when we get to Crystals after the appointment. Yep. That's what I did for that woman and how was I repaid? No wonder I want to be sick when I think about her still to this day. Another bastard. I have Tabitha in the back seat still struggling to live. So I took her with me because I was frightened that she might die and it was kind of mad but I, was, I didn't want to leave the, the chicken dying alone wanted to keep an eye and I hope that she pulled through right. Lots of stressors. It's rained incessantly too. Such peculiar weather after that nasty ravaging heat wave. It's not surprising the roads are flooding. I hope the farmers are getting at least some of this good wet stuff. So picture this. I'm with that ungrateful fucking evil demonic bitch driving her to the hospital to get her eyes checked after her. she'd had surgery and I at the same time I've got a dying chicken in the back seat and at the same time I'm dealing with flash flooding and road closures trying to hold myself together what did Davidson David Davidson say you can do anything but by the gods people took advantage of my kindness they really fucking did. I mean, not the chicken. The chicken had no say in any of that. But that evil bitch, might by the gods, piss on her to this day for what she and Dave put me through. Fuck me. But, you know, it's okay. I dreamt of him this morning. So he pops up whether he wants to or not. It's ridiculous. Anyway... I had to let it all go. I had to let it all go and just, just let it all wash off. Huh? The good wash that she'd forget to do with her filthy vagina, right? Had to just let them all slough off so I can stand in my own light, my own authority and heal my own body, mind and spirit and allow true loves because I'm still being sent toxic. A toxic man last year playing me for some kind of idiot it's with the same name Davidson I mean for the love of God so it shows me that um, I still have work to do on um, yeah healing my heart from those awful monstrous people otherwise I'm only going to keep attracting false people and dead shits and I can't have that I want um I want my love partner to be the right man for me, caring and loving and honourable and decent next time. Not more monstrous shits like those fucking shades and hellhounds and putrescent stinking zombie things. I, we can't we can't have that. I, I we the royal we I, I can't have that. I just can't. It's miraculous that I have the capacity to love ever again anyway after what I was put through for decades. You've just heard about my childhood. 
my adolescence in Ipswich, walking around and, you know, it was actually a very nice little, you know, singlet top with an embroidery over it. There was nothing indecent about it. You know, my father talking to me like I was some, some used up old dirty rag already at 16 years of old, years of age in my adolescence when I should have been protected by my father, by the way. The pig. But no, I went on to keep him in my life right up until my early 20s when I, you know, when I migrated here when I was 23. Another thing I was actually trying to get away from, by the way, by the gods. So don't ever underestimate my capacity to love and don't ever, ever confuse my kindness for weakness. There's a few people from the past that I have mentioned before that seem to think me being kind to them meant they could completely, utterly trash my entire life. I was a true friend to them, them both individually. And now I keep my circle very, very small and very, very protected. Even though I dance wildly and triumphantly and defiantly and fiercely and amazingly on my weekends out surrounded by, you know, 50 to 100 people, however many people in the club, very few of those people get to be close to me really emotionally close very few get to actually ever experience the real me Scott from Alter Egos does because I've danced for his band for 13 years and he's seen me galvanise and pull myself together many times at the Live Wire Bar and previously at the Irish Murphys and the elephant back in the day, surrounded by those kinds of monsters. So when he says he loves me, he means agape, platonic, friendship, love. And he admires my guts and my courage. Juddy does, same reason, seen me out, hold my own, 13 years. But, um... There's a reason I go to the club alone and I go home alone. I don't bring anyone into my inner sanctum, sanctorum, into my sacred space. I've been burnt too many bloody times by fucking idiots. So, you know, I go out, I dance and I retreat to my safe space. And it's been that way for many years, people. And I'm totally okay with that. Totally okay with it. Just woke up at 10.38am, exhausted. Tabitha is still alive, but very weak. I gave her another drink. I hate seeing her like this. She is a fighter, though. The day seems a bit cooler and overcast, so perhaps we will get more rain. 23rd of January, 2013. Yesterday, I came down off my emotional high from the awesome weekend and was exhausted from schlepping the heavy furniture and old mattresses to the verge for the annual council pickup, they call it curbside collection or something but anyway once a year you chuck all your old stuff out and it gets smashed in a compacting truck right I really must have overdone it today I feel tired and still have weakness so we'll rest more I guess I installed a new fish pond a bath I schnorred from the roadside and schlepped home it looks lovely the water lilies will do much better, at least until I can find or buy 
a larger spa bath. Went to which the which housing made me get rid of in 2019, just after my surgery when I was weak and vulnerable. Low fucking dogged things to do to me too. Honestly, it's just, it never ends, people. This is why from time to time I still get suicidal at the constant ugliness surrounding me, you know. But look, I'm doing okay. I've just got to adjust to this medication and I'll be back in a, hopefully feeling better in a few weeks or months time. I went, <clears throat> this is still in 2013 people, I went to Carindale shops with Jared. He joked I was still tired when I felt intimidated by some brat behind me on the travelator. So when I got home, I read a book in the hammock and sure as eggs are eggs, I passed out. I woke up feasted on by mozzies, which really annoys me as I put AeroGuard on. Looking forward to dancing this weekend. Need to summon up more energy, but woohoo. So, you can see I've been doing this dancing a long time, maintaining my dance, maintaining my stance and my dance. 23rd of January 2011, Schnorra Saga continues, dot, dot, dot. I'm extremely tired after schlepping defunct TVs, furniture, computer monitor, old rotted out wooden wardrobe and cane furniture setting out to the roadside for collection. I forced myself to take Miss Bella Rosa for a walk afterwards and scavenged a few bits and pieces for the garden. I feel quite content with my day's work. I now have room under my house for my brand new car. I hope to manifest in actuality when I get my inheritance. How's that for positive thinking? And I did get my car, but she doesn't fit under the house. <laughs> the lady who took my cane coffee table was delighted as she wanted it for her daughter and granddaughter. I was happy it went to a good home and will be enjoyed. In the next few days, I will water pressure under my house to get rid of the maximum amount of dirt and move around the remaining furniture items. Crystal will take another cane coffee table, so that's good. I'm looking forward to a relaxing night watching TV. Phew. I want to just lie down and die as I've been busy for a few days now. It feels good to clear out under the house though. And um, thus concludes the readings of my journal entries from 23rd of January 2024. So um, it was intense, it was traumatic, it was, you know, my usual musings and frustration and moribund furies but well life is better now I am immersed in love when I go dancing at the new club I've been going to since 25th of August 2023 most people there are kind to me I don't have a man on my arm to um control me or dominate me or boss me around too much um, I've got several men looking at me with great affection there all of whom are unavailable so I'm safe and believe you me safety and maintaining my freedom means possibly even more to me than having a true love partner does and we all know how much I want a true love partnership but safety and freedom come first, people. And so I'm waiting for the right man to appear in my life who will show by his actions 
and emotions and words and intentions and um, behaviours and the whole picture that um, he is worthy and capable and willing and able and wanting me in his life and uh, he'll have to be consistent he'll have to be trustworthy he'll have to be honoring of my mind body and spirit and soul he'll have to understand my need to feel free at any given time he'll have to understand that I go dancing on Friday nights usually and or Saturday nights and um, maybe he'll have to be someone that likes to go dancing with me so he doesn't get riddled with anxiety and insecurity and jealousy and stupidity when I go dancing because I don't go out playing the field or hooking up I just dance have a good time come home exhausted so um yeah, finding a man that can um, can accommodate all of that and be part of my world and let me be part of his world and include me in his family life and his personal life and treat me like a much-honoured, much-desired, much-valued, you know, partner to him. Um could happen one day but it hasn't happened yet so uh, I hold out hopes but in the meantime I'm rejoicing in my freedom and my little bit of mischief every now and then flirting a bit just to be mischief harmless mischievous sweetness really not really expecting it to go anywhere and um, well I'd be astonished if it went anywhere because no one's ever loved me enough to want me in that way for a long, long, long time. So um, that would uh, that would literally blow my head back if someone said, yep, you're the one, Tanya, and I want you to be my partner. I'd be like, what? Are you? I'd think it was a joke, actually. I probably wouldn't take it. I'd probably giggle and not take it seriously, and then they'd probably get hurt and run a mile, right? probably have had opportunities in the past and not taken it seriously but you see you get I get these fantasy men I call them fantasy fucks they used to turn up at the casino and you know they'd see me dancing in the same spot weekend after weekend and they'd develop this fantasy that they were somehow in a relationship with me but they hadn't even majority of them hadn't even had a bloody conversation with me you know hadn't connected with me in any real way and then they'd come up and they'd start, oh, you're going to come home and fuck me? I'd be like, I don't even know you. Like, who the fuck are you? You know? And then they'd get offended, but it's like, in their mind, they'd develop this thing with this relationship with me that never existed because they hadn't even had a cup of tea or bought me a drink or talked to me, you know? And they'd just assume that you were just there just to be a void waiting to be filled by their penis. It's like... Oh, please, I've got better things to think about than that, you know. But there was a time for a few short years, about four years, when I did go home occasionally with people. And, wow, look how that ended up. The blind leading the blind, being betrayed by stinking, treacherous, putrescent creatures of the night, right? So, look, there's a kind of a comic irony in that. You kind of have to laugh, you know. I had to upgrade my life and I had to even choose my friends a bit more carefully because some of them were just, they were just disgusting how they behaved. And I had to level up myself and realise it's not how I want to be as a woman. I don't want to be associated with people like them have people look at it and think, oh, she must be the same because she's with her. No. Had to distance myself from quite a few malevolent women like that in the casino days um, right up until 5th of August 2023. I had already, mind you, I had already 
detached from a few people that had shown themselves um, disloyal and untrustworthy. And I had already reverted to my usual practice, which was to arrive there alone, go home alone. And, you know, if my friends caught up with me at the, the live wire bar, they could join me on the dance floor and dance with me, but I wasn't really associating them with them outside of that 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 cultural uh, milieu it was the tiny comes in dances goes out and um, I'm doing the same thing here at Brooklyn Standard um, and sometimes it is a bit lonely it would sometimes be nice if I could say hey let's hang out afterwards or let's meet up tomorrow or whatever, but I have to be cautious. I really do have to be cautious. But I'm slowly making new f f acquaintanceships. Like I met, you know, this um, couple's brother and sister last Friday night who seemed quite quite genuine and sweet, really. And um, definitely they were enthusiastic and enjoying their wild night out. And you know what, it's good for people. And it's also good for them to see that I'm out being wild too and having fun and facilitating the fun of people around me. But I just don't want to get involved in any um, anything sordid or tawdry with men who are disingenuous. You know, I just, I, I just don't want that. So, you know, it's, um, it's just the way it has to be. And, um, I mean, I could write the book on disingenuous, just read my vocal media and certain characters keep reappearing with a monotonous regularity. I mean, it's not rocket science. You can work it out why I am the way I am today, people. But I'm healing and I'm post-traumatic growing as always. And I'm loving what's left of my life. And, you know, when I get more money eventually, I, I'm going to do more silversmithing. I was looking at things today, thinking, oh, I should make this and I should make that. And I'm inspired. So the only thing that holds me back now is, you know, my fatigue <laughs> and my constant grinding fucking poverty and yeah, my ill health, but if I can resolve that, I can do anything. So on that note, bye for now. Have a beautiful evening, people. It's 8.31 p.m. and I'm really quite tired. And one of the side effects of the drug is fatigue, so it explains why I've been a little bit more tired than usual the last two days. And here I am pushing out my truth out into YouTube world, um, pushing out my, um, my creativity and my authenticity and my little legacy I leave behind um, for the day that comes when I no longer exist in this mind-body and um, my spirit will move on to another dimension and it's hard to imagine what that will be like perhaps my true love partner is waiting for me in the next dimension and I'll be surrounded by all the love and safety and honour and respect that was long denied me in this life and um, yeah hard to imagine what that would be like but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to be immersed in love for um, however it t however long it takes till I'm recycled back here again or somewhere else in the cosmos. It's a strange, it's a strange existence sometimes too, wondering if there even really is an afterlife especially for me who's always believed in one. Sometimes I wonder if it's all just a story we tell ourselves. <laughs> you have to laugh sometimes.
but I know better. I know something powerful and supernatural has kept me here over and over again. And uh, I know there must be a higher reason, even if it doesn't always make sense to me. So um, I'll go with that. And on that note, good night. Stay free, stay wild, stay joyous, stay triumphant, stay clean, stay clear, stay proud of who you are. Hold your line, whatever your line is, babies, love is the law. To my true loving friends who've been so romantic and sweet with me in recent months, you know who you are. And uh, Scaramouche do the fandango to the rest. <laughs> Take care, people. Bye for now.